makes you feel elated to know that you are the difference out there between life and death. I don't think any other career is going to give you that kind of reward. Deep breath in. It's exhilarating. You get up in the morning not knowing who you're going to go to, what you're going to treat, who you're going to see. My friends think it's great. Probably looking at me and thinking, God, I'm so jealous. It's brilliant. It's a fantastic job. I personally think it's one of the best jobs in the world. I worked as a respiratory technician within a hospital. I loved the patient contact, hated being stuck in one place. So when I saw the job advertised for um, student paramedic, it was the next step really for me to be out and about. It was a perfect career choice. My brother himself is a paramedic and that was probably my biggest influence in becoming a paramedic. From the stories that he's told me um, just made me feel like I want to be part of that. I want to, I want to be able to help people like that as well. I enjoy helping and assisting people and you know to me that that's that's more beneficial than any financial gain that you could ever get. I did a lot of uh, community work when I was sort of in my early teens uh, and it just felt like a natural progression. I've, I've been helping other youngsters and other people out and just wanted to continue that experience. I've got a very caring nature anyway and to be able to use my skills to help somebody else in their time of need, that really attracted me to the role of a paramedic. Working in the ambulance service offered me the opportunity of doing something different every day and working in the outdoors um, and that's why I became a paramedic. To apply to be a paramedic you can either join an ambulance service, so you apply via the NHS jobs website or you can choose to go directly to university, so you can contact your local universities directly, find out what their entry criteria is and go through there. Each ambulance service will have their own entry criteria. Predominantly you're looking at five GCSEs, grade A to C, which include English, Maths and Science, um, and usually a level three qualification, which is the equivalent to an A level. People from BME backgrounds tend to be underrepresented when it comes to ambulance services across the UK. We're really committed to increasing our diversity and making sure that we're more reflective of the communities. Interviews and assessments were daunting, shall we say. Um, so it entailed um, numeracy and literacy tests, which were quite basic. We'll have a look now at the basic rules that you'll need then for interpreting an ECG. The training course entails lots of different aspects. So not only does it deal with like the medical aspects of treating a patient, the drugs that we use, it goes on to manual handling, how to lift and carry the equipment, the patients. So we're going to look at the heart rate, so is it fast? All the equipment that's inside an ambulance, how to use it appropriately. I'm not going to lie, it wasn't easy trying to learn that amount of information in such a short period of time, but the tutors and the training staff there were fantastic. They pushed you, They, if you didn't understand something, they were more than willing to kind of help you. I'm more of a practical person, so obviously when it came to doing um, more writing, it was a bit more difficult for me, but you know, they've support there for me and I overcame that in the past. Coming from a non-clinical background, you know, it's tough to start with, but with anything, if you break it down into segments, you know, take it, take it in baby steps, then, you know, it's achievable. The essays and all the assignments sound scary. Once you get down to it, it's not too bad. The best bit of the, of the training course uh, was, the, was the blue light driving. Essential on learning how to drive an ambulance safely. Those skills are kind of, you need them every day when you, in order to drive safely to get to patients. Your friends and family do think you're a bit of a hero doing this job. They think that you wear a cape. I mean, you know, the skills that you have in this job, you are there and you do help people, but I don't feel like a hero. I feel like I go out, I do my best every day, and I help people as best I can and get them to the right care when they need it. My family, in particular my mum, was quite proud of me. Um, it was, you know, I'm joining a job which is very respectable, you know, it's quite honourable, um, so she, she, she was really happy for me. And my friends were, I think, on the jealous side, as in I got to do something I was going to enjoy and it wasn't going to be mundane, nine to five. My family and friends and the communities, they like to go and to become a doctor or solicitors and everything. But this okay, is more is exciting for me. Cheers. Hi, I'm Hello. What's your name? My name's Stuart. How are you doing today? What seems to be the issue? It's shortness of breath. It's 
tightness in my chest. How long have you had this for? My dad was like, you know, it's one of the best career choices you can ever make. I actually sometimes when I put my uniform on and I see paramedic on my shoulder, I look at it and I think, my God, how did that happen? You know, it's, it's been hard work, but I think it's been worthwhile and I think I'm proud of myself that I've been able to achieve it as well. I see a lot of people coming through who are quite timid, quite shy, um, don't really know what to expect from the job. So you see them go through training and then I'll bump into them out on one of the hubs out on the road and they're just much more confident. Initially, it can be very scary and quite daunting because at the end of the day, people's lives are in your hands and it is a big responsibility. 37.5. The key quality is to be a good paramedic, you know, you need to be able to communicate well, uh, be a good listener. Patience is definitely a big thing. You need compassion in this, you need to be able to care. You do need to have a tough skin. Um, there, there's always going to be jobs that are going to affect you emotionally. Respect and dignity is massive. I always go into a patient's house and and think this could be my grandmother or this could be one of my parents and I treat them the way I would expect someone else to treat my family. There's so many things that are open to paramedics these days. We can now work in the community, we can work in the walk-in centres. Is that quite sore when I touch there? Yeah, okay. I've known people to go on to do medicine as well um, from being a paramedic, so your options are endless. I joined the ambulance service at 16. Uh, as a cadet, progressed onto a technician and then became a paramedic. I worked on the helicopter uh, for seven years, uh, uh, which gave me great experience with trauma. It's the best form of transport that there is. Um, you know, it brings a smile to my face just thinking about those days. And then I progressed on through supervision and into management to my current post now as the general manager for Staffordshire and Arden. I have a thousand staff. Dealing with one patient each day is very rewarding, but actually being able to provide that provision for hundreds of patients is absolutely, you know, I, I can't really put words on, to, on what that feels like and being able to deliver that every day. If you're keen and you've got an interest in patient care, an interest in working for the ambulance service, then please apply today. Um, as long as you're motivated about patient care, we want to hear from you. All right, nice slow walk. Two days are not the same. Uh, two shifts are not the same. Two patients are not the same. So if you want variety, the ambulance service is where you want to join. It makes you feel elated to know that you are the difference out there between life and death. You know, it's a big responsibility, which I enjoy. You, you adapt to all situations that are thrown at you, and it's just a job like no other.